Hi, I thought I'd show you how I do my flooring, my wood flooring. Um, the usual apologies for wobbly handheld camera, but I honestly don't know how else to cover all the things I need to cover by having it stationary. First of all, this is um, the cheapest form of, of the flooring I buy. It's on a, a piece of paper. It is sticky back. You can peel the paper off and stick it straight down onto your surface. I usually don't do that. I leave it on its backing paper and I use very thin double sided sticky tape to put the floor down. That way if you have any problem with wiring or anything else at any time you can just pull it back up again quite easily. This is a fairly nice but fairly crude pine finish. You can see all the nice planking in it which looks really good. Um, and obviously it's up to you if you want to use it just like this, that's fine. But you can paint it, you can stain it any colour you like, do what you like with it. Generally speaking, not always, sometimes I paint it, but generally speaking I just varnish mine. And that will, in fact a clear varnish, and that will bring up the grain of the wood. If I slip that one in there you can probably see the difference between that that's varnished and the one that isn't. The varnish I use, you can use anything obviously, the one I use is a quick dry varnish from B&Q, it's clear and it's a satin finish. As usual I'd recommend that you don't go for a gloss because gloss is way too shiny in a doll's house. You want something that's going to give you a sheen but not masses of reflections. Um, even, even shine has to be sort of scaled down to 112 to look right. The most important thing about doing your floors is making a template, a paper template. Now I know that you're immediately going to say, well I'm perfectly capable of measuring an area that looks like that. Width, depth, square, there's no cutouts, nothing very complicated about it. And I agree with you, but let me just say that the one that you're looking at there runs out by a bit over a quarter of an inch from front to back. So on that basis alone, um, just putting uh, a skirting board in, for instance, is not going to fill that gap. You won't be able to fill a quarter of an inch. If you get it wrong by that amount, you're going to end up with a gap down the side edge there. So don't always think that because a room looks fairly square or rectangular, it's as easy as measuring. I promise you it isn't. They're often all shapes. You're very lucky. I mean, if you get it, if you get a kit and it goes together and it's spot on, that's brilliant. But if, like me, you've done alterations on your rooms, on your inner walls, or it's your average kit, it's not going to be absolutely square. Um, so the important thing is to do it is to make a template. And to make a paper template, it's as obvious as it sounds. I'm, I'm not going to show you properly how to do it. Firstly, I've got one hand to the job. Um, and secondly, at the moment, I don't even have enough paper. I tend to use, I tend to keep by me for all kinds of things, um, a roll of um, lining paper for walls, for wallpapering, because it's very cheap. It's cheaper than buying a, a roll of wallpaper. That said, if you can find one knocked down in a bin sometime, buy that. You just need something that's going to be fairly wide and obviously pretty endless if it's just going to be chopped up and thrown away and used for all sorts of things. So this piece of paper obviously isn't big enough, but it's going to show you roughly what, what I would do with it. I would work by keeping one, I would work by keeping two edges straight. So I'd, I would make sure that that one and that one ran perfectly well and kept and remained straight all along the edge. Then what I do is push it over to the other side and run down with my fingernail very, very carefully all along the edge. Then when I take it out, making a crease all along the edge, all across the back, and then when I take it out, I can see where I've made those indentations, and I'll put a ruler against them to make it into a decent enough line, and draw a line. I then overcut it. In other words, I cut it bigger by at least another quarter of an inch. And I stuff it back in again, because now it will be easier to push it down more accurately and I go round and do the same thing again and I can either do it with my nails or with a steel rule or anything that's got a decent edge you're basically trying to make a perfect replica of that shape in there 
The obvious thing you then do is cut it out when you think you've got it right. Most important, put it back in again and check, 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 check. It's absolutely just as you would want it. Right on the front of your paper here, right on it front, because the, the amount of times that you will flip that paper or turn it around when you're working is astonishing. And then you go and cut out on this wood and if you cut it out the wrong way around, upside down, back front, whatever, your wood is not going to fit clearly. So always make sure that you've got written on the front of your piece of template here, front or an arrow or something to signify this is your front edge and this is your top. You can then work out how that's going to fit onto your wood and place it carefully on your wood, either on the back and draw around it or on the front and draw around it. Again, remembering which side up is up. So, for example, if you've got an arrow or front written on here and you want to cut it out on the back, it's no good turning your material over and putting that on that way up with front written on here because you're now upside down. You're going to have to make sure if you're turning this upside down that you turn that upside down. Draw around it with a ruler, cut it out. This wood will cut with scissors. You can cut straight through this with a pair of scissors. If you prefer, cut it with a knife, but scissors will do the job for you. When you cut it out, um, as I said, finish it however you want to finish it. If you want to finish it like the one in here, I give it one coat of quick dry varnish. It does quick dry well within an hour. You, it's very dry. You can touch it really, you know, it's fine. But the longer you can leave it, the better. So if you can make this be a job that you do last thing the end of the day and perhaps do more than one floor if you've got more than one to do leave it overnight and then you know it's really 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 bone dry after that you go over it's called denibbing because you'll find that when you rub your hand over it after you've done that first coat you've got lots of rough surface lots of nibs in the wood come up lots of fibers in the wood come up because of the moisture from this this incidentally is um water cleanable one as well so it will water soluble so it's an easy clean up as well so anyway, back to what I was saying, it's dried overnight, rub it down, deem a bit with that, it's so easy. This is um, a painter's sponge, you can get it in all kinds of shapes, sizes, pads, sponges. It's basically what a painter would use either to smooth plaster or to smooth, as we're doing, between coats of paint. Preferably rub with the grain, there's an old fashioned saying that for every one rub you do the wrong way against the grain you're gonna to have to do 24 this way i'm sure that's only if you're you know making really super duper furniture but even so if, if you just learn the habit of rubbing with the grain you're always going to get a better finish it doesn't really matter if you go back and forth or you go in one direction but stay with the grain of the wood which you can see is going this way you can see the little lines in it and then you do all the same thing all over again you varnish it, you let it dry overnight, and you rub it down. After two lots of that, in my case, you can go for three. The more you do, the better. But in my case, I do two. And after those two are done, it feels lovely. The colour in the, the wood has come up, so it's looking okay. And what I do is I go over it with some brown boot polish and that just finishes it off, it gives it, it takes it down a bit, it turns it down a little bit and it will put sort of little bits of dirt in between the planks of wood so it doesn't look quite so pristine. Okay, there's a simple way of doing floors. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say. On this one, because this is the bottom floor and it doesn't have any lights under it or anything like that, I have actually, for the first time ever, peeled the back of this and stuck it down and it went down a treat. It was not at all difficult and there's no bits that haven't stuck. It's in contact front to back. So you can do whichever you like, stick it down with double sided sticky tape or take the back off it and just stick it straight to the surface. And you'll see it really does make a nice looking floor.